Hey backers, Ryland here. It's been an extremely exciting few days here at PG Printer. We've been printing and we've been getting amazing results. Let's check it out. We printed this owl and it came out with no holes. Finally, a print with no holes. And you know, there was a lot of things that we had to do and still more things that we haven't talked about that we had to do to solve the holes, but we're gonna to get to that in another update. In this update, I'm just gonna talk about the amazing results that we've got. So, because we had such an amazing print, we decided it's time to try painting. And me and my girlfriend, Jen, sat down and did some painting. And she's painted this one and she's done an amazing job. It's uh, a very small print and it took, uh, took a lot of effort to get the paint on just right. We are just completely surprised and enamored with how good it looks with paint. Uh, it's just amazing that a $100 3D printer kit has the functionality to print something that looks like uh, it could be purchased from a store. You can't actually tell that this 3D print was uh, printed. There's uh, no artifacts left after painting. And so that is just uh, really wonderful news and I'm so happy to be at this stage in the project. So a big thanks to Jen for doing such a great job of painting this print. And we highly recommend that you guys try painting your prints too after you've got your printer. Let's move on to the Dragon's Claw. Because we knew that it was possible to print with no holes, we tried to do a print with a shell that was completely sealed. That means we did a layer at the bottom that, uh, that caused the whole print not to have any openings to let the resin out after. And that worked wonderfully. This uh, was just, the, only the shell was printed, but it left resin trapped inside the print after. And so when we put it into a curing chamber, it became a completely solid print. And that is one of the, really interesting advantages of this printer is if you don't have to do infill but you can still get a solid print after then that saves a lot of time in printing. And the detail in this print is really impressive and even some parts of the print were just glassy clear and you could see right through it but you know when it's glassy clear it's hard to photograph so again we painted this print and uh, I painted this one it, it was actually a lot of fun to, to paint. I did lots of different layers and in painting the owl we've used oil and in painting the claw I used acrylic. Uh, both types of paint work and they, they work really well. Um, so it's again just very exciting to see the printer doing such impressive work. So the next print is really interesting. We printed this without any support material and it's just amazing that this printer can pull that off. With most printers, you would need a lot of support material to do something that has such a large amount of overhang uh, and flexibility. But with the Peachy printer, because everything is submerged during the print, it's basically floating and it's basically weightless during printing. So we know that we can print things that are uh, not possible to print with a lot of other printer setups. And we know that we can print things that have really huge overhangs and uh, very little support material required. So 
It's also interesting to note how flexible this print is. Uh, we can print with some pretty thin wall thicknesses. This print has uh, less than one millimeter wall thickness. And that means that even though this is our stiff resin and it's fully cured, it's really quite flexible. And we basically printed a spring. Another thing that we've been experimenting with is fluorescent dyes in the resin. And that's a, a really neat thing to do because the laser being in the UV spectrum really makes the dyes light up for our time lapses and, and for just watching the printing process. And after, it's really interesting to put the prints under uh, UV light or under a black light and see how they just illuminate. So you'll see quite a few prints now that have been printed in various colors of fluorescent uh, dyed resins. Let's move on to this chain. You know, I've been thinking a lot and working a lot with this printer, and I thought I'd like to concentrate on modeling something specific for this printer that really brings out its strengths. The Peachy printer is definitely good at printing really tall things. We don't know how good it is at printing really wide things yet, but tall things is definitely a strength of this printer. Another strength that the printer has is the ability to print a really large object on top of a tiny object. And we have that ability for two reasons. One, we never physically touch the print while we're printing. We only shine light on it. So there's nothing, there's no forces being added that might disturb it or move it. And two, its own weight doesn't really affect it's printing because it's floating in something that's basically the same density as it. Uh, the salt water is just slightly more dense than the resin. So with those two things in mind, I wanted to design something that really showed the strengths of this printer. And so I've come up with this chain and you can see that all of the links above the first link are only connected to these three little one millimeter pieces of plastic. And so I'm, I'm really excited about this chain. It came out just as I expected. And uh, it's, it really shows the strengths of the printer. You may notice that in this print, the walls are a little rougher than in some of the other prints. And I think that we need a few more features to smooth out the process of turning the laser on and off. Because the laser does turn on and off quite a few times. There's, there's a few different uh, islands during the print. And I think that that's where most of those artifacts are coming from. And I fully expect that we'll be able to uh, solve that completely. So I designed this chain to show the strengths of the Peachy printer. And the whole idea was that I could, after printing it, simply crush it with my hand and get an actual flexible chain uh, where each link has printed inside another link. And the support material in between is so small that it just is easy to crush and we end up with a chain just like you'd expect. So let's give that a shot. So that went really well. I'm actually surprised at how strong the support material was and I'm sure that we could print it with a lot less and make the breaking process easier. In one of the spots it was a little too strong and it's broken one of the links but uh, you can see that it's a solid proof of concept and without any cleanup, we have a, a chain that, that acts like a normal chain. And we could uh, maybe take a file and clean up some of the support material that's left sticking out inside the links. But all in all, uh, a, a great first try. So that's it for part one of this update. As you can see, we've got some more great prints, some larger prints. And we'll get to that soon in part two. So stay tuned, and we'll talk to you soon.